Okay, welcome to the Unit 3, Lesson 5 on Quadratic Word Problems. So in this lesson, we're going to look at uh, a bunch of different word problems and kind of explore how to set them up. They're all going to be quadratic, so we're always going to get like an x squared. So let's begin with the first type of problem you're going to see. Uh, when we're looking at the product of two consecutive integers is 56 find all possible pairs of integers. So the, a lot of these problems, the first thing is understanding what it's asking you and what's going on in the problem. So the first word here, product, you need to know that that is multiplication. So I'm going to be multiplying two things together. right? And it says consecutive integers. Well, integers are positive and negative numbers, but they're not fractions. They're whole numbers right positive and negative whole numbers and consecutive consecutive would be like three four five six right those are consecutive they're in order right so how do I get from three to four I add one how do I get from four to five I add one five to six I add one so to move from consecutive integers you're always adding one so to generalize that for any integer X the next integer will be x plus 1. So again, I'm looking for the product. So I will be multiplying these together. And it says that it is 56. And of course, is means equal to 56. So that's how you set up the problem. And setting up the problem is, is pretty much the hardest part of this, I hope. Uh, so we're trying to solve. The way you solve a quadratic is to get it equal to 0. So I distribute my x and I end up with x squared plus x equals 56. So x squared plus x minus 56 equals 0. So now I'm going to try to factor this. And, and you should know that numbers that multiply to 56 and subtract are positive 8 and negative 7. And if you have any trouble with how I factor that, then you need to go back to Unit 2, Lesson on Factoring, and work on your factoring skills. Once it's set equal, your two products are set equal to 0, you set them each equal to 0, so I know that x is negative 8, and x is negative, or sorry, positive 7, right? If you don't know how I got that, you need to go back to Unit 2 on Solving, from intercept form but here's my two possibilities so my first integer is negative 8 if I add one to that I get negative 7 so that's one set of possibilities my other possibility is to start with 7 and add 1 to give me 8 so there's both sets all my possible pairs of consecutive integers that will Give me a product of 56. All right, so pause the video and try number one, and then unpause the video and look at the answer and see if you got the same thing I did. Pause the video. Okay, so you should have got the two consecutive integers of negative 10, negative 9, positive 9, positive 10. Okay, so that's the first example here. Uh, this one, the second example, talks about consecutive odd integers, okay? So this makes it a little more interesting in that they're odd. So let's say I had 1, 3, 5, 7. Those are all odd integers. How do I get from 1 to 3? I add 2. From 3 to 5, I add 2. So when it's talking about even integers, or odd integers, you're going to kind of set up the same way. We're looking at x, and we're looking at x plus 2. And again, we're talking about product. So we'll be multiplying those together. And then we have the is, so equal to. Now here's where you want to be careful. It's more than. More than switch Sorry, I can't spell switch. Let 
the order. So I have 21 and I have 6 times the smaller, so that's 6 times x. And we're going to switch the order, so it's 6x plus 21. That would get me more than. Okay, so let's distribute. x squared plus 2x equals 6x plus 21. So I wanted that equal to 0, so I'll subtract my 6x and my 21. And I get x squared minus 4x minus 21 equal to 0. Factors of 21, that subtract to give me negative 4. V x minus 7 and x plus 3. So I get x equals 7, x equals negative 3. So consecutive odd integers, my first solution pair would be 7. If I add 2, I get 9. And negative 3 plus 2 gives me negative 1. So those are my possibilities. Okay, so pause the video and try number two and then unpause the video and check your work. So pause the video. Okay, so this problem was a, a little trickier than the last few. Uh, hopefully you're able to, to kind of figure this out here. Uh, it started with two consecutive even integers, so x and x plus 2. But then it said such that the square of the smaller, so that would have been x squared, there's my is, which is equal to 10 more than the larger. The larger was x plus 2. 10 more than means I add 10 to the end of it. So then I simplify. That's This should have been the hardest part was getting it set up. From there, you should be able to, to factor it. Notice I got two factors, x equals 4 and x equals negative 3 for my solutions, but it's even integers, and negative 3 is not an even integer. So I cross that off. The only solution is 4, 6. Okay. So let's continue on. Let's talk about some rectangular area problems. The length of a rectangle is 2 times its width. The area of the rectangle is 72 square inches. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. So what would be useful is to kind of draw a rectangle. Now length, width, doesn't really matter, right? If I call this L and I call this W, then I've established the length and the width. Now it tells me that the length is 2 times the width, so L is 2W. So I'm going to go back here and I'll say that's a, this is 2W. Right? L and 2W are the same thing. Area. Area equals L times W. So 72 equals the length, which is 2W multiplied by the width, which is w. So I get 72 equals 2w squared. Now this is quadratic, but the nice thing about it is there's only a quadratic w. There's only w squared. There's no w. So I can solve this by isolating and taking the square root. So 36 equals w squared. Take the square root. Algebraically, I know that w is plus minus 6, but practically speaking, because it's a word problem, the width cannot be negative 6, right? Now, you want to be careful here because the variable can be negative, but when you plug it back in for the dimension, the dimension can't be negative. And that's a little bit tricky. In this case, the variable and the dimension are the same thing, but if it was, if the dimension was say something like uh, 2x plus 3 or 2x plus 10 
and say x was negative 2, then it would be negative 4 plus 10, which is positive 6. So again, that negative variable would be okay. So just be careful. If you have questions about that, we can talk about it. So the width I now know is 6. My length I now know is 12. So this is a 6 by 12 if we're talking about w times length. So make sure we know which one you are counting as w and which one you're counting as length. All right? So let's move on to the next problem on the next page. This is another kind of uh, rectangular area problem, but these are border problems. Okay? So again, a picture is very important. If, if we don't give you a picture, then you should draw one. But anytime we're talking about borders, we're talking about a rectangle inside of a rectangle. All right? So a landscaper wants to put a cement walk of uniform width around a rectangular garden that measures 6 feet by 10. So this is my garden, and it's 6 foot by 10 foot. She has enough cement to cover 165 square feet. So the 165 feet is the gray area. This is 165, right? How wide should the walk be in order to use all of the cement? So it gets a little tricky, right? Anytime we do in borders, right, and we're talking about, you know, how wide it is, the distance from here to here needs to be the same as the distance from here to here. So if I call this x, this is also x. So this distance should also be x, and this distance should also be x. And now my border walkway is a uniform distance. Okay? So let's establish the area of the larger triangle. So if this is 10, then all the way from here to here, we could say is 2x plus 10. And then if we say, okay, this distance is 6, so then this distance would be 2x plus 6. So you should be able to kind of see how I'm doing that. If you're having trouble with that, that's a very important step. So make sure that you uh, ask us about that tomorrow. If you don't understand how I got 2x plus 6 and 2x plus 10, make sure you ask about that. So I'm going to find the area of the larger rectangle. And area, again, is length times width. So my, my overall area is going to be 2x plus 6 multiplied by... 2x plus 10. And that will give me the large area or the overall area. And now we also have in here, right, we also have in here a smaller rectangle, which is 6 by 10. So that tells me that this is 60. Right? This is a 60 square feet garden. Right? So the area of the garden is 60 square feet. But what we really want is the area. of the walkway, right? So the overall, gar overall area minus the garden area, if I subtract that, I get the area of the walkway, right? So the overall area minus the garden area gives me the walkway area. So if I was to set up an equation, I'd say 2x plus 6 multiply by 2x plus 10 minus 60 will equal 
165. So let's distribute and we get 4x squared uh, plus 20x plus 12x plus 60 minus 60 equals 165. So 4x squared plus 32 equals 165. Get that equal to 0. And we're looking for factors. Okay. So remember, multiply 4 times. If I do my area model, I get 4x squared negative 165 and I'm looking for factors of uh, what is it 630 that subtract to 32 so hold on one second okay so we can use this opportunity to kind of show you a nice little trick uh, on your calculator for factoring these larger numbers okay so remember you have to multiply your first times your last so I'm looking at four times negative 165 so it gives me negative 660 okay so y equals negative 660 divided by x that will give me all the factors all the integer factors of negative 660 and I want those factors to add up so I'm going to divide by x again and then I'm going to tell the calculator to add them together and that'll be my y2 column when I look at my table, my y2 column will be the result of adding my numbers together. And again, I'm looking for a negative 32. Well, I didn't get a negative 32. Since there are no values uh, that add together to give me negative 32, and I know that this equation will not factor. So I'm not going to have a nice, easy answer. So what I'm going to have to do is change my approach and come back and graph this, right? Which maybe that's the way you want to start off doing it, is just graphing it. That's fine also. So let's do 4x squared plus 32x minus 165. And let's look at our graph. So we see an, our answer here, right, is somewhere on there. We find out by calculating our zero, right? And so we'll left bound, right? It's below the axis, so we'll hit enter. Come up till we get to a positive number. Here we go, hit enter. And I get a zero of 3.6, we'll say x equals and let's just round down to 3.5 that way he doesn't run out of cement right sometimes you round up to 3.6 and that means he's going to run out of he's going to run out of cement because you round it up when you have a material that you're using you generally want to always round down which is called truncating right that way you underestimate so that you don't run out all right so we find that the sidewalk is 3.5. If he makes it 3.5, he'll have enough cement to do the whole walkway. All right, so let's continue on down here. You have an example problem. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one, and then we'll come back and check your answers. So pause the video. Okay, so again, this problem, a little bit trickier so take a take a second look through the work that I did and see if you can figure out if you weren't able to get the correct answer of 120 square feet uh, see if you can follow the work that I did and figure it out if not then again ask about this in class uh, use this opportunity to, to to ask questions let us explain it and uh, we'll move on from there so that's it for today. Uh, we'll see you in class.